Gentlemen and gentlewomen, welcome, welcome once again. It is now week 14 of development and here are some of the things we have been working on. First things first, as you can see, aerial attacks now work, which was a thing that was hugely requested on our first demo. As you can see, they blend seamlessly with the ground attacks. You can now walk with the gun. You can jump with the gun, and you can also shoot while you jump with the gun, which is a great. It's it's a great thing. It increases maneuverability a lot compared to before, when you can only fire at a standstill. So that's a bit more powerful now. As you can see, also with jumping. It is a bit more floaty right now than it used to be. So you cannot turn as sharply in midair as you used to. It's a bit more akin to the old Super Mario games. So you actually have to have to go through a little bit of a deceleration before you can turn. So this is kind of cool here where you can, with the gun, when you can pull off these cool John Wick action moves where you jump and you shoot the, the, the guy in the face while you're mid, in midair. And so for the... For the final visual change, or like the really observable change, if you look closely now on the robot enemy, if I can just take care of these guys, you'll see that when I shoot him, there's a little spark effect that comes, and so it highlights that you're actually hitting the shield and not the enemy. And Martin is going to add a sound effect to that as well, so it will really highlight the fact that you're not actually doing any damage to the robot, sort of a little metal clunk. So it's a bit more visible. As for the boss, we have done a little bit of an overhaul to his combat behavior. As you will see shortly. I have changed it so that his lightning attack does not. His lightning attack has a bit more wind-ups. It doesn't exec. It doesn't execute as quickly anymore. Which is gonna. I won't be able to show this again, but it's gonna be a godsend in in terms of difficulty because. As before, you really couldn't. Pr you even if you pr predicted and were fully aware that the lightning exec lightning attack was being executed, you could do nothing to avoid it, which you can now. You get a little bit of a little bit of ex extra frame to jump out of the way before the lightning attack strikes. As another thing, I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna reduce the missile range. So the boss shoots missiles if you approach him at about this distance. If you look at the distance to the police here. And I want to increase that distance a bit because I feel like about this distance should probably be like a safe zone. Right now there is no safe zone. You're being attacked regardless of where you're standing. Either by the grenades or the rockets or by the melee attacks. And for an early game boss, that's probably going to be a little bit overkill. It's going to be a little bit too hard. So I'm going to look more into overhauling the combat behavior of the boss. So, if you look, if you have been observing, you might have also noticed how the frame rate has drastically increased. This is mostly due to the fact that I'm using a new video recorder because OBS won't work on me anymore. But secondly, due to the fact that 
Actually, I have improved the frame rate by the game, and it's due to fixing a little bug that I... <laughs> it's a stupid little bug that I'm gonna... I'm just gonna get tab out, and I'm gonna show you how I did it. Let me introduce you to the Unity Profiler, if you have not seen it already. This... I cannot recommend this nifty little tool enough. It really helped me. So what was the issue was that on every enemy, I did a thing where I went over and updated the animation state every frame, which was really bad because it. if I did that on every frame, I updated all the parameters in Mechanim, if you're familiar with that. Uh, it took a lot of memory and it took a lot of time. So it really dragged the game down. Which I started notice because as I was, as I as I was killing enemies, the frame rate increased. So, what I did was I recorded about thirty seconds of gameplay. This is just a stock photo I found on the internet. So, but but imagine this is what happened. So I took about thirty seconds of gameplay, and it showed me here all the classes I had, both the built-in classes and my own classes, and I could expand them, and then you can see for every function how much time and percentage it spends in the CPU. So basically how much processing power it's taking up. And this is so, I can't recommend it enough, it's so useful if you're looking to improve the performance because you can see exactly where and really narrow down where the choke point is in your code. So as for next week, Martin, Martin is gonna go over and make a lot of new sound effects and I am gonna look at making a new tile set for the level. Now that I've improved my pixel arting skills, I want to try to make... I've looked at some reference art, and I want to make something more akin to this, where it's either the same orthographic perspective that we have, with a lot more details on the buildings and on the sidewalk. Maybe you can walk in the road instead, so you can feature all the details on the sidewalk, on the layers in front of the buildings, instead of on the same layer as the buildings, as it is right now. Either that or this picture that I found, where you have you have the the the, uh, the street on the the street is on the primary layer, and then the build buildings and everything is in the background, and the street is has a orthographic perspective, but then about twenty two degrees I think, but then the buildings, uh, the top of the buildings as you can see are slanted in a different angle. So it looks a bit more... You can see the perspective a bit clearer. It's not strictly orthographic. And what I like about this is you can see more clearly where the rooftop platforms are, which you cannot do in the game currently. I've had to gray out all the, all the, the, the sides of the roof that are not walkable, and it doesn't really look good at all. So hopefully next week the level is going to look more akin to this. I don't think... I don't think I'm this good of a pixel artist yet, but we'll get there. I really like the post-processing here as well. You can see all the all the lightning effects on the on the buildings and the snowflakes that are falling, and even some objects in the foreground that you could put some parallax on to make it appear. You, you make make the perspective stand out even more. So that is it for this week. Hopefully you had a fun time watching this, and I'll see you again in one week. Yeah, well, yes, one week. Well, I'm back to my old upload schedule that I had in the beginning now. Yeah, tune in, and goodbye.